Hi everyone and welcome to Somi Media House. Uh, today I'm sitting here with the one and only Daniel Aga. Uh, Daniel Aga is a former Danish professional football player and current football coach. Uh, as a player he appeared in the central defense for the Danish uh, Superliga club Brøndby EF and afterwards in the English football club Liverpool FC and he has also been captain of the Danish national team. I want to start off by saying thank you so much for participating in this interview. Welcome. I'm sure it's going to help a lot of, a lot of young athletes. And um, then let's just get right into it. Um, uh, during your uh, professional football career, you suffered some, uh, some uh, a lot of small injuries. Uh, what is uh, what was the most difficult part about being injured so many times? Uh, I think uh, the problem, especially when it's not a longer, a long-term injury, I think the problem is stop and start all the time. And uh, especially when you play in England, uh, it's a long season, so you need your pre-season uh, to prepare for the whole season. It's, it's basically from July to June, and then you have the national team, so it's a long year, uh, not a lot of breaks. So I imagine if you stop and start all the time, uh, you never get into a rhythm, and, and on a pitch, uh, as a footballer, you need to be in a rhythm to perform. So that is that is definitely the most difficult thing. So did you get like a bit unmotivated sometimes? You know, running into all of the small. No, I think I think it was more the opposite. I think it's more the opposite because uh, every time you you can't play, every time you, especially me, when I look from the outside. Uh, I want to be there. Uh, I want to perform better. So that moti motivated me. You know, I, I wanted to be back as quick as possible and even better than when I got injured. So you worked extra hard. Always, and that's I think for me as a professional footballer, that's the only way you can look at it. If if you don't, uh, at the end of the day, you you won't succeed. If if you if you don't work hard every day, uh, you'll struggle. But if you don't work hard when you're injured, you'll never get back. So you weren't really afraid that you wouldn't come back to the same level as before? Um, with the big injuries, yeah, I had my concerns, especially my back. I had a back surgery, which uh, was a tough one. Uh, it was an injury I played with for many months, uh, and in the end I just couldn't do it anymore. So we decided to do a, a surgery. Um, and going into that back surgery, um, I never really knew what, what would be the outcome, and uh, and of course you have your doubts. But but end of the day, I can't, I couldn't think too much about it because uh, I had to focus on my uh, rehab and uh, trying to get better, uh, get better shape than I was when I got injured. I have to ask because you seem very very confident and very strong immensely. How, how did you come to this point? Has it always been like that for you? Um, I think it's a mix of everything. Uh, first of all, it's 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 your childhood, of course, uh, how you're raised, uh, how your parents are, all these things uh, that guide you in the right direction. Um, and I uh, I knew from a, a quite early that that that. that if I wanted to do anything in this business, uh, it had to be because of my mentality, because I uh, I was stronger there than than, than most others, uh, and also because I wanted more than others. Uh, so I was I was quite aware that uh, that this was where I could uh, make a difference. So did you have a lot of support from back home, you know, from parents and stuff like that? Yeah, I had support. Uh, I never could never complain about that. Uh, I think obviously it was a different time in the 80s and 90s growing up, uh, but but uh, I always had support at home. Uh, and I think that, that's a big part of, uh, of me becoming who I am. Uh, but also uh, the clubs I played in, the school I went to, uh, every, everybody has a part of it. Yeah, I know because I couldn't do it without my dad, mm. personally, because yeah, he drives me and and really supports me as well. So, mm. um, so did your coaches and your teammates also, you know, help you 
uh, uh, be better as a football player? Um, I think so. as a kid, you know, that that's who you rely on. Uh, that's who you surround yourself with. Um, and also the, the your teammates, you're with them almost every day. Uh, also in school, when you're a kid uh, and, and you coach there from an early age. Um, I, I had a, in the club I played, there was a lot of support for that. Uh, it's, uh, it was a big thing. Uh, and it was it was it was a club with a lot of youth players, um, so that definitely uh, helped me and it definitely pushed me in the right direction. And do you have some uh, some good advice for young athletes if we turn it back to the injuries, um, uh, how to overcome you know, in if we uh, talk about you the small injuries. Uh, Small, smaller injuries are of course easier. Uh, it's more the long term where I think it's important that uh, that start positive, start thinking positive as early as possible. Even though it's tough uh, when you get the uh, the results of your scan or whatever you have done, it's it's so difficult when you know you're gonna be out for eight, nine, ten months. I think the most important thing is to stay positive uh, and to work hard. Uh, it's as simple as that, because that's the only way back. Yeah, I know when I got the scan, I was it was r- really frustrating for me mm. uh, doing my. But also looking up to you know world-renowned players like Virgil van Dijk and especially you all. Also, you know the mentality mm. there is very important. And then, do you have uh, in general some good uh, advice for? Young athletes that want to play at you know your level, you know the absolute top level in in football. I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's rocket science. I think uh, end of the day, of course, you you need to have some quality, you need to have some talent. Uh, but the best players in the world, uh, in general, is also the players that work the hardest uh, and done it since they were young, uh, and keep doing it even though they're top of the game. They work harder than anybody else. Uh, it's uh, there's no big secrets. Um, you need to do things over again and again and again, like you do in school. Like you do in school. That's that's the only way to learn, is to listen and to work. Um, that's the two main things. And then th- this is a bit diff- different. Uh, a final question: How is it, you know, being such a great professional football player and going from that to now being a football coach? Uh, of course there's a difference, but, but it's not a, a huge one. Uh, everyday life is similar. Uh, there's some, de- some, some other decisions that has to be made, uh, some bigger decisions that has to be made, and you have to focus on a group instead of focus on yourself. Uh, so so that is the, for me, that is the main difference. So you think you, you use some of the things you had learned during your professional career? A lot. A lot, a lot of it, it. <laughs> yeah, a lot of it. Uh, of course, experience, you can't buy experience for money, so you need to use it if you got it. Uh, the only way to get experience is to try it. Then, why did you choose uh, Hobiku to be a coach here? Because it's a good project with good people. Uh, that's important. If you do something, surround you with good people. That's the most important thing. Yeah, well, thank you so much. You're welcome. And thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Hi everyone. Before I end this video, I would really like to say a couple words about the Aga Foundation. Daniel Aga set up the Aga Foundation in the summer of 2011, with the main focus on giving something back to the community. The foundation wants to raise money for charitable organizations and projects with the main focus on helping children in need. They want to make a difference by providing extra comfort and support for vulnerable children and people in difficult circumstances. If you want to know more about the foundation, please check out their website or their Instagram. I am truly inspired by the foundation because they're giving so much back to the community. Like I'm trying to give a little bit back to young athletes with injuries. So please stay tuned and I'll see you around. Have a nice day.